Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the success, the success shift. My name is Jake. It's Wednesday today. And uh, I think I'm a little tired to be perfectly honest with you. You know, things have just been nonstop and, uh, you know, little, little man's doing really well, but he's very active. Been working pretty hard up early mornings, down late at nights, and I'm only human. And I think today I'm just feeling a little bit of that fatigue set in, a little bit of that, you know, struggle. At the, at the end of the day, we're all human. We can only do so much. And <clears throat> whilst I do love to push and, and you know, push the limits and, and continue to work hard, fatigue does set in um, and exhaustion does set in. And so I think I'm going to be overdue for a little bit of a rest just because my body feels like it needs it. That's all. Um, I had a couple of yesterday... And the day before on the charts, I made a couple of mistakes I haven't made in ages. You know, this old, old habits just still sinking in every now and again. And these are like the kind of things that we talk all the time about on this call, self-awareness, pattern interruption, pattern recognition. And one thing that I've noticed on multiple journeys from people that I've been observing and trading with for a while now is that as we grow and as we develop, we make prog progress, you know, we get rid of some habits and then all of a sudden they come back in and they... They just rear their head again, like, hello, I'm still here, bad habit. Um, and I think it's really important to observe these and not beat yourself up. I had a moment yesterday where I was like, what am I doing? And I got really down on myself. And then I realized that I actually I'm a bit tired and there's other things attributing to this. And I was like, okay, this is an interesting point in time, Jake. You should take this as a lesson. And what I observed was that I was fighting the urge to be perfect, I think, and do things really well for far too long. And I was trading great for the last little while. And then when this habit came back, I was like, oh no, I'm back to my old self. When really it wasn't, it was just, um, you know, just a blip in time. And and we talk about the difference between mistakes and losses a lot on this. Um, well, I, I try to reinforce this concept of the difference between mistakes and losses. And it definitely becomes a part of you that losses are part of trading, but mistakes, those are the ones that, that hurt more when, even when you get a win, when you don't follow your trading plan. <clears throat> and I think for me, it was having a couple of mistakes. Okay. That was random. For me, it's having a couple of mistakes come through um, and then, and then holding on to them for a little bit longer. So I just wanted to share that with you because while my frustration and etc arose on the charts i was able to because of my new practices step away uh not let it affect continuing trades which i was very proud of but when i went back to review my on chart behavior i realized okay this is just something that we can observe and and we can learn from and, and not hold on to um and we can just let it pass so i want to encourage anyone who you know as as we as you grow and as you develop and as you start to remove these bad habits be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up when bad habits come back. Don't sit there in frustration and let them dwell because the real growth in trading and in life, I think, comes from when those mistakes or those bad habits return without any effect, knock-on effect. So we talk about the darts, first dart, second dart. First dart is you make a mistake, you go back to old habits. Second dart, third dart is you hold on to that, you beat yourself up, you let those emotions carry forward. And I'm talking from personal experience in the past when I used to do this. I used to get better and I'm like, yes, I'm getting better, make a mistake. And then I'd hold on to that and it would affect next two, three days, maybe the week, whatever it was. Um, and this was obviously emotions playing in. And so when I had this return, I was like, hang on, Jake, you've grown, you've developed. What was this? What is it? Does it need to stick around? No, it doesn't. And I actually thought multiple times of whether to share this with you because that would be bringing it back up and having it stick around or whether to just let it go and move on to the past. But I thought it was a... Um, an important lesson um, for those of you that are, are growing and developing and moving forward. Okay. So just wanted to share that quickly. Find Finding gratitude today. I'm finding gratitude for my journey, for my development, for all assets of life that um, progress forward slowly. Sometimes we move forward bit by bit and then we don't actually look back at how far we've come and it's been three, four, six months, a year, two years and you don't really feel like you've changed much because you've slowly been growing, but you've changed a hell of a lot. And it's important to go back and, and find gratitude for that and look at the growth you've had and, and really be proud and supportive of yourself because that will create that success mindset. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today is the state of mind that is success or failure. 
Okay. So chuck your gratitude in the chat, get involved. Um, I feel like the gratitude has been dying down a little bit, but I really want to reinforce it. Even if it's just something small, find something to be grateful for each and every single day as it will compound. Um, and as you make it a habit, it's a really nice habit to, to incorporate. Okay. So today, as I mentioned, I want to talk about the concept of success and failure being a state of mind. Now, the whole point of this show, The Success Shift, is to have paradigm shifts, to have those. All it takes sometimes is one sentence to hear at the right time, and you're like, boom, my mind has just been opened up. I can move forward at a whole different trajectory. I've gone from this level to this level just because that one sentence or that one key aspect that I just heard. And this is what I call a paradigm shift. This is where you get one key bit of information. It could be a paragraph. It could be one word. It could be a sentence. It could be connecting two dots, whatever it is, that aha moment, that paradigm shift that makes you go. And everything is seen from a different perspective. I often say life's about perspective Um, all the time. What was I got here? Remember, you can always find a different point of view and change the way you think about any situation in your life. So finding these sentences, finding these little bits of information that make you completely reassess the way you view things um, is the whole point here. And I really want people to understand that I believe, and I've read it in many other places, that success and failure are a state of mind. Okay. And what do we mean when we say state of mind? Well, a state of mind is the mood or emotion that you're feeling at some particular time. The key here is that it's a mood or emotion or a feeling that you have at a particular time. Now, as time passes, so too can your mood or feeling. So your state of mind can often fluctuate. And so this is important to know because when we have a struggle or a loss or a mistake or a fail moment it's entirely up to us again to decide how long we're going to hold that on for hold on to that for sorry will we hold on to that and let it dwell and let it affect because the thoughts that we hold on to the most is what becomes our reality and so if we have a thought of i'm a failure i can't do this we hold on to it these things are going to actually start to um ring true in our life But if we have that state of mind of, oh, I'm achieving, I'm growing, I'm developing, I'm I'm progressing forward all the time. Like, look how good I'm doing. Look at the progress I've made. This success state of mind, then these things are going to to come to fruition in our life. So it's really important to be consciously aware of the, the, the state of mind that you're in. Be consciously aware of the thoughts that are going through your head. Be consciously aware of the things that you're bringing to your attention on a day to day basis, because these are the things that are going to keep you going in the direction that you're going in. Look at your entire life right now. Everything that you have in your life, the current situation, is basically due to a bunch of choices and decisions that you've made along your way. Now, some of them can be good. Some of them can be bad. Some of you might be like, how dare you, Jake? This has happened to me. How dare you? You don't know my situation. And if that's the case, that is completely fine. I'm sorry if I offended you. But the truth is, everything in your life happens to you and you get to choose how to respond to it. And so at any point in time, you can choose a different choice. And at any point in time, you can shift the trajectory of your life. And now I know it's really, really hard for people to take that responsibility and try and own that, especially when lots of us have been drilled into this lifestyle and it just becomes this amalgamation of subconscious behaviors that we've been programmed into in that has created the life we have. And it's just so natural. And that this is our current belief system of this is how life is. But really you can take that and change it at any time. If you've ever been traveling on your own, you know, I grew up in Western Australia, very nice Western first world country, um, people, plenty of money. And then you go traveling to Africa for seven weeks and you see the way people live there and you think, Oh, this is like a holiday or this is like a glimpse. or this is, you know, out of reality, but, Put yourself in their shoes. That is reality. That is the way. That is the environment. That is what life is. And so we can choose at any point to shift. We can move. If you want to go drastically, you can move to another country and uplift your whole world. 
you can decide to get fat-free butter instead of, I mean, salt-free butter instead of butter, salty butter. You know, all these choices can be massive or they can be tiny, but they are going to make the differences in your life. And it's up to us to decide what are the diff- what are the choices and what are the thoughts that we're going to hold on to, okay? Um, what I wanted to talk about is that it's also a muscle. And so lots of the time, we were talking about this just two days ago, I think, the default mode network. So what are the thoughts that you have when things turn to shit? What are the thoughts that you have when times are tough, when you make mistakes, when you have a bunch of losses in a row, you know, or to not eat butter at all? Well, yeah, I agree. I don't really eat much butter. I just, for the first time in about two months, I was like, I'm going to have butter and Vegemite on toast. Yes, I'm Australian. Yes, I love my Vegemite. And it was great, but I haven't had it in ages. So that's why that analogy came up to me. So, um, so yeah, when we're thinking about this default mode network, what is it that we revert to? What is the thoughts processes that we that we you know fall back on? And know that you can change these as well. So it's not going to happen overnight. Remember, we we're talking about that um, left hand right hand analogy from Mel Robbins. This is the the thing with the success or failure might state of mind. It's not going to change overnight and it's not going to be there forever. You know, you will have moments where you feel really, really successful and you might have moments when you feel like shit and you feel like a failure. But the thing is we can over time practice, we can work that muscle and we can bring awareness to this state of mind that we're having. And if it is in the failure mindset, if it is in that, oh, I'm no good, I'm negative self-talk, et cetera, et cetera, stop yourself, pattern recognize, pattern interrupt and shift it. You can over time build that so that rather than going, oh, I've taken a loss here. I'm no good at trading. This sucks. I'm going to let it affect the next trade. You go, oh, that was a weird loss. I'm going to write that down. Come back to it. Not a problem. Move on. Success mindset. When the failure and the mistake becomes the abnormality and not the common, then we have that true growth. And when the failure or the mistake is the abnormality and we see it as nothing more than that, we can move on and we don't hold on to it. And we don't, I guess, you know, um, exacerbate it and bring it in to our life more than it needs to be there. It's like this concept of haters i remember when i first started out on my social media online journey let's say i definitely had some haters coming at me and i felt the need to defend myself and argue with them and spend so much time and energy proving to these people that i was right and that i'm doing the right thing and that they should leave me alone and that i know what i'm doing etc etc and when i look back now i realize how novice and juvenile and i wouldn't say juvenile i guess but novice and unnecessary these things were now if i get a hater or a negative comment it's like (laughs) thanks it means that i'm annoying someone perfect and that's pretty much all the energy that it takes from me actually sometimes it gives me a bit of energy because i feel like i don't know maybe i like poking people's buttons but i'm like yeah i'm bugging you because i'm doing good sucks to be you and that's pretty much the entirety of what a hater comment happens with me now but it's taken me a while to get to that process it's taken me a series of pattern recognition, pattern interruption, and transferring my mind consciously to allow that to be the automatic response, to allow that to become what happens without me thinking about it. Because at the end of the day, like I said, a choice is yours. Every single thing in life is a choice that you can make. You can go left, you can right, you can stop, you can go, you know, bus is coming along, you can choose to step out. You may not even be consciously aware that it's coming, but at the end of the day, stepping forward is a choice. Now, lots of these things are subconscious now, but pretty much every single thing you do in life started off consciously, except for maybe breathing. I think as soon as you come out of the the womb, you take your first breath and you scream and all of that is almost automatic and built in. But everything else from that, from the ability to move your hands, the ability to pinch your fingers, the ability to walk, talk, cry, run, yell, jump, shout, whatever it is, is all stuff that has started at one point being a conscious decision that you've made and you've done it so many times over and over again that you drill it into the subconscious part of you. And now this can be said for so many things. Sitting, coming home and after a day of work and putting the TV on, you do that every single day, that's going to become a subconscious behavior that sometimes you don't even realize you're doing it. And just like every other aspect of your life and every other choice, you can 
choose to consciously change it, but it will take a process. So think about this. What is your state of mind? Are you in a success state of mind? Do you fall back into a failure state of mind very often? And if so, are you aware of it or do you just live in that state of mind for much longer than is needed? Okay. Our perspective on every situation is what defines who we are. Okay. And over time, like I said, we can grow that skill, that ability to observe the world through positive and optimistic lenses. You'll meet some people that will, I don't know, let's say crash their car and then they will be mad at the entire world, the driver. And six months later, you'll go to dinner and be like, remember when that car crashed into me? Rah, 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 rah. That's just how people live. And I feel sorry for those people because they're so angry at the world or they've got such, such frustration and such lack of responsibility that everything else in their life is someone else's fault. And the unfortunate things about that is that's a paralyzing thought pattern because if they believe that this is all someone else's fault, then they have no ability to change it. But if you're the kind of person who crashes your car and goes, man, I probably should have slowed down a couple, couple of kilometers. You know, maybe I should have put those new tires on my car. I knew I should have got my brakes checked. You know, I was actually texting on my phone. All these things that you could have possibly been doing, I probably should have checked another time to my left. These are taking responsibilities so that way you can actually change them again. You don't have to dwell on them. You can accept like, oh, well, that sucked. And send your car to the repairman and by next week it's repaired and the whole situation can be forgotten about. Energy moved forward. Exact same thing with trading, okay? The trades, I feel, I just, I find that so many times you speak to traders and they're like, yeah, I was doing really well, but then there was a gap and I didn't know what to do. And then this happened and then this happened. And then like the broker did something and then, you know, I couldn't get MT5 working. And then my phone died and my, my, my screen locked and, and all of a sudden, you know, I was down by all these points. And now since then I haven't been able to trade good again. It's like, yeah, okay. Shit does happen, but you know what? You talk about these things and you can either go, yeah, I messed up because my phone locked. I should have actually changed that on my phone. Or I've been meaning to trade on my laptop instead of my phone for X amount of days. I should have done that. This is my fault. You know, as soon as we can start doing that, you can start realizing the changes and the progressions. And this is what a successful state of mind is because you can go, well, that was a lesson I needed to learn. Let's move on. How can we grow? How can we develop? How can we move forward? <laughs> There's a, a a video I was watching which was talking about the law of cause and effect, okay? And basically, something happens. There's a cause and there's an effect with everything in life. It's a, it's a natural law of the world. And they went down to the level of saying our thoughts are the cause and the conditions of your environment are the effects. And it's so true because the thoughts that we have will create the reality that we live in and the thoughts that we now let me let me go a little bit deeper into this not so much the thoughts that we have but the thoughts that we let linger enough to attach emotion to are the thoughts that will create an outer world if i'm sure you've heard the saying before that your external environment is just a mirror of what's happening within if you have a lot of shit going on a lot of chaos a lot of you know stress a lot of anxiety a lot of mess whatever it is it's probably because a lot of stuff's going on inside that you need to clear out first and the thoughts that we have and let linger for long enough to attach emotion to are the thoughts that we will start to act upon. And those thoughts that we act upon are the things that are going to create the entire world that we live in. So <clears throat> I think it was Mark Twain said, there are a thousand excuses for failure, but never a good reason. Okay, we have a responsibility in our life to decide the way we want to live, to decide the things that we're going to let affect us. And if we look at the word responsibility, we can break it up into two things, response and ability. And so many times on this call, I talk about learn how to respond, not to react. React is a chemical reaction of things that are going on in your brain that you are kind of out of control of. If you're reacting, it's more of a chemical change that you do not have control over. If you're responding, it's an educated, skillful response that you have control over. And so your responsibility is your ability to respond calm skillfully and in a manner that you want life is never going to stop throwing you challenges and obstacles and issues okay but you have a responsibility and you have the ability to respond in any single way you want to these obstacles challenges and issues whatever it is 
The truth is, these are never going to end. There will just be another one that comes, another one that comes, another one that comes. But what will make it seem like it's easy and not an issue is your state of mind. And that we can choose. You can choose right now to enjoy and embrace and bring on all the obstacles of life, the challenges, the hard times, the, the struggles, the, the ups, the downs with a, oh my God, this is a fun challenge and how can I learn and how can I grow from it? Or you can wish for a flatline life that doesn't have anything and then bitch and moan and complain every time an obstacle or a trouble or a challenge comes your way. Exactly as Yvonne says, embrace the ongoing learning. Okay, I do want to finish up here in a little bit with a little poem that I really, really like that kind of sets all this in place. But I'm going to um, just flick back through the chats because I've seen a lot of stuff coming in the chats that was actually quite powerful, but I've just been too much on a chain of thought to get to it. So back to the gratitude. I'm grateful for the small progresses, progressive steps that we are all experiencing and your honesty in this podcast. I'm also grateful for electricity and that I can even be here this morning after a blip in the power service this morning. It's funny. I often say, if you really struggle to find gratitude, think about the things in your life. And then what would your life be like if you didn't have that thing? And most of the time, like the best example I can think of is your mobile phone. Everyone like, yeah, yeah, I don't need my mobile. You take it away for 24 hours. And everyone's like, oh my God, I didn't have my time. I didn't have my alarms, everything. My whole world went to chaos. Be grateful for it. You know, be grateful for those little things that, that when they're gone, what's that saying? You know, you never know what you had until it's gone. Well, you do know what you had. You just didn't realize how valuable it was to you. Finding gratitude can bring that valuable valuability back. So I love that. Finding the gratitude for the electricity when you had the blip in power. I'm happy and grateful for my morning routine. Quality sleep. Oh, I'm a little bit jealous of that one. I, I love it when it comes. Last night, I didn't have the best sleep. Maybe that's where my fatigues come from today. Meditation, love it. Books, learning, growing and progressing. Summer weather, nature walks, morning tea and looking forward to breakfast after trading. Yum. That's great. I'm grateful for my family, friends, neighbors and I are healthy. That is also amazing, healthy life. So thankful for a good sleep and time with grandkids. Grateful for choices in life. Um, yes, Aaron, tomorrow is a new day, a fresh start. At any point, you can wake up and change your life. You just have to make the decision because every day is a new day. In fact, you can find gratitude for being awake on the day because sometimes it doesn't always happen for some unfortunate people. Grateful for being able to spend time with my grandson yesterday. He's 10 years old, but yesterday he was with me when I was on the charts and is interested in what I've been learning and he got to experience a good trade that I took awesome he's going to be a trader newbie i love that passing the skill down generations that is incredible all right one finger pointing forward three points back to me yeah it's a very good um visualization for anyone who's pointing fingers at others okay so this quote that uh this poem shall i say that i'm going to finish up on it's by walter d winter wintle i believe um and it kind of just summarizes this whole concept of the way our thoughts really make us who we are and and the thoughts that we act upon really define the life we have so it goes like this if you think you are beaten you are if you think you dare not you don't if you'd like to win but you think you can't it is almost a cinch you won't if you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in this world, we find success begins with a person's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win the prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or the faster man. But sooner or later, the person who wins is the one who thinks he can. I just thought it was a very powerful poem. Um, it really does highlight all those aspects of that, you know, that lovely saying that I love, whether you truly believe you can or you can't, you are correct. Okay, so I hope that makes a little bit of sense. I I talk about this so often because it is so important and it is like a muscle. And the more we hear about it, the more we understand it, the more we can start to put it into practice, which is the main thing. And then the more it becomes who we are. And it really, really is important that you understand that you can become whoever the hell you want in life if you just start to shift your mindset and think in a different way. 
And lots of the way we think is subconscious. Lots of the way we think is built in. And this is why it's hard to change that thought process. Really, really, really important to understand that you can at any time change this thought pattern and process, but it does take a little bit of persistent work and to not get beaten up by the falls and the struggles along the way. Okay. I'm going to leave that there. So good. I appreciate you, Jake. P.S. A great interview with Bailey Powell, by the way. Awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you listened to it. Yeah. If you haven't listened to that, go back, check out the um, episode with Bailey Powell and um, James Leon will be coming out soon. If not already out by the time this podcast goes to air. So thank you very much. Everybody, make sure that those trade my, to my traders jump on to the trading call, but make sure you read your trading plan. Make sure you go through your trading journal. Make sure you do your brain warm up. Make sure you understand your lot sizing. Make sure that you understand risk management. Make sure that you have got all the things prepared. When I say journaling, I always recommend having a hard journal. If it's just, it doesn't have to be this one, a book, you know, a pen, put it in front of you, ready to journal. Otherwise, you kind of just let it slip into the abyss. And then once you get angry and frustrated or the emotions come, rather than doing your journaling, most people just shut the laptop and storm off. And that is not what we want to do because you can always journal a very good day, but have no growth. But journaling the really shitty days and all the days you make mistakes and then revising them and sitting in that um, without too much held on frustration, that's when the um, true growth is going to happen. Okay. So, to my traders, let's jump over the trading call. To everyone listening on the podcast, much love, and I shall speak to you again soon. Bye for now.